morning or evening whatever time you're happening to be watching this I got off that couch that you just saw at the beginning and took these photos of the moon and nature and power lines because without nature oxygen plants help us breathe and if we weren't breathing we would be probably yeah dead and you wouldn't have these power lines to help you view this video um, get internet talk to your friends and family on the phones um, so yeah enjoy these photos that I took I love photography if you would like me to take your photos for free because I don't have an ABN number yet I'm getting there I'm still doing this I've taught myself apparently I have natural raw talent so thank you to my mother who used to be a photographer is retired now um, but yeah I've pretty much learnt this to do these things by myself and the video you're currently watching um, no one taught me I just really like I just stick to what I'm good at and apparently I am good at this so I hope you like the photos and yeah if you'd like any like any any of these photos um, feel free to text me inbox me on my Facebook page just hit the like thing and then you can send me a message oh there's a turtle <laughs> yeah um, good night turtle because the next day you'll be viewing on this video is Anzac Day enjoy For most of us, these names mean very little, but they are all part of this community in the early 20th century. They are all on the memorial at the top of the hill overlooking where we stand here today. The memorial also reads in honour of those from our community who lost their lives in World War I and then erected in respect and gratitude to the townspeople of Kowal. 
absolutely wonderful uh, to see you all gathered here. It's just overwhelming really to see the, uh, the numbers of people here this morning. On this day above all days, we recall those who served in conflicts and who did not return to receive the grateful thanks of their nation. We remember those who died amid the holly scrub in the valleys and on the ridges of Gallipoli, on the rocky and terraced hills of Palestine, and in the lovely fields of France. We remember those who died beneath the shimmering haze of the Libyan desert, at Bardia, Derna and Tobruk, and amid the mountain passes and olive groves of Greece and Crete, and the rugged snow-capped hills of Lebanon and Syria. We remember those who lie buried in the steamy jungle of Malaya and Burma, in New Guinea, and in the distant islands of the Pacific. We remember those who lie in unknown resting places in almost every land, and those gallant men whose grave is the unending sea. Especially we remember those who died as prisoners of war, remote from their homes, <coughs> and from the comforting presence of their kith and kin. We think of those in our women's services who gave their lives in foreign lands and at sea, and of those who proved to be in much more than name the sisters of our fighting men. We recall too the staunch friends who served beside our men on the first Anzac Day from New Zealand, those soldiers who helped create the legend of Anzac. We think of every man and woman who has died so that the lights of freedom and humanity may continue to shine. We think of those gallant men who died in Korea, in Malaya, in Vietnam, and in the recent conflicts in Timor, in Bougainville, in Iraq, the Solomons, Afghanistan, and numerous other smaller missions around the world. May all of these rest proudly in the knowledge of their achievement and may we and our successors in that heritage prove worthy of their sacrifice.
They shall grow not old as we that will ever grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor do the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. <laughs> Hey Grandma, are you still here? You made it. I'll just walk you up this hill.
in the civilized countries of the world is stronger than ever it was before towards peace. Less than one year after he made those remarks, the young men of Queensland were enlisting in the 2nd and the 5th Australian Light Horse, together with the 9th and 15th Infantry Battalions, to fight in the war to end all wars. In fact, it was these brave men of Queensland who went on to participate in the great counter-offensive of August 1918, which became the turning point in the war against Germany. A day that German Field Marshal Erich Ludendorff described as the black day of the German army in this war. War is not just a thing of kings and emperors, of presidents, of prime ministers, of generals and of admirals. War, in all of its horror, is a very personal thing and a very local thing as well. Here in our local community, here in Belimba, here on the south side of Brisbane, we sent 205 of our best local lads to Gallipoli. They came from each of our local suburbs and many never came home. Many of those who did were scarred for life. And the great trees planted here, which stand behind me today, are planted in their honour. The sobering thing is that 100 years later, William Finlayson, the federal member for Brisbane, way back then, he was not alone in his views 100 years ago that war was impossible. In fact, there's an extraordinary book that's just been published entitled The Sleepwalkers, How Europe Went to War in 1914, which documents how many of the European leaders of that time considered the possibility of war as remote, arguing instead that in an age of unprecedented economic integration, it simply made no sense taking up arms against one another. Despite, or perhaps even because of this underlying mindset, Europe instead managed to lurch from crisis to crisis before war finally seemed no longer impossible, but in fact inevitable by the time they reached the summer of 1914. And the rest, they say, is history. And for Australia, a country then of barely 5 million people, nearly 400,000 of us put on the uniform of Australia, 152,000 of whom were wounded, and 62,000 lay dead on foreign soil where they remain to this day. And among them, so many of our very own local Belimba lads as well. It's difficult to picture these numbers in our mind's eye, but next time any of you are at Lang Park, think of that stadium full to the brim, and then imagine each of those attending as wearing the khaki uniform of Australia, sitting as silent sentinels of the war to end all wars. So what would these Anzacs say to us gathered here in this beautiful memorial park 
What would they say to us nearly a hundred years later? It's of course presumptuous for any of us to speak on behalf of the dead. But from their dispatches and their diaries and their letters home, we can pick up certain gleanings. I think the first is this. They would remind us first and foremost of the need for eternal vigilance. There is nothing determinist about history. We choose our future and the nations of the world choose their futures as well. And it is their leaders who choose where our futures are governed. The searing letters from our warriors past, the searing letters that they wrote home, describing painfully and bloodily the horrors of the battlefield demand that we do so. The formal missives from their field commanders informing families that they had lost not just one son, but two sons. And in the case of some families, three sons in a single battle. War is the ultimate human horror. If there is one final message from those whose ghostly souls are among us today in these trees, perhaps it is simply this, that we Australians are at our absolute best when we are serving the needs of others rather than just grafting for ourselves. Amidst, oftentimes, our national political rancor, we often lose sight of this most simple but eloquent of truths. Many of our divisions, in fact, seem to be manufactured as some form of bizarre public entertainment as we strut and fret our hour upon the stage and are heard no more. Whereas the overwhelming yearning of our people is for us to come together on the essential things for our nation's future to work together on the things that matter, just as we would encourage the nations of the world to work together for our common human purpose. Otherwise, the disease of division will ultimately rend us all apart. As others have said before me, in things essential, unity. In things non-essential, diversity. In all things, service to our families and service to our communities. Otherwise, we fail to keep the flame of hope alive for our nation's future. And then, much of their sacrifice, the sacrifice of our veterans, would have been in vain. So whatever our callings in life may be, wherever our life or work may take us, Anzac Day also calls on all of us to be their worthy successors in building this Australian nation together. So on this eve of the centenary of the war to end all wars, let us all ponder these things afresh. Vigilance for our national defence. Fully engage in the diplomacy of peace in a region which threatens so much war. And together building the future of this great nation of ours, Australia. These, I believe, are the messages of Anzac for us today.
Go, go, go! <laughs> Lest we forget. Forget. And I put it on a mountain top. Now tourists come and stare at us. Blow bubbles with their gum. Take photographs of fun. Have fun. They'll name a city. Yeah. 